Hi, this is Mrs. Robertson, and I am going to go over the study guide with you. We didn't have time to go over it in class. Um, for those of you that are working on it and checking it this evening, here are the answers to the study guide. So for uh, letter A, mean is the average set of the data. So you would just draw a line um, to the average set of the data. Median is the middle number. Mode is the number that occurs the most. Range is the spread of the data. And the interquartile range is the range of the quartiles. It's how large the box is in a box and whiskers plot or a box plot. List all the measures of center. That would be mean, median, and mode. List all the measures of spread. That would be range and interquartile range, IQR for short. Now, in the next section, there is no question. It was um, the question part, and I'm not sure what it was. This came from the junior high, this worksheet. Um, was hidden underneath there, so we don't know what question four really was about. So we're gonna go on to question five. Based off of visual inspection, which animals appear to have more predictability? Well, that would be the data set that is most, uh, it's, it's not as spread out, it's, it's together, it's clustered together. And that would be this one here, and it's house cats. In number six, if 18 out of 21 people like the Colts, predict how many out of 500 like the Colts. So we're going to set it up as a proportion. There are other ways of doing it, but I'm going to be consistent and um, use the proportional relationship here. So we're going to do Colts over total. C for Colts, T for total. So 18 out of 21 like the Colts. Predict how many out of 500 would like the Colts. Now we will use cross products and divide. So you're, we're going to have 21 times X equals 18 times 500. Yes, you will be allowed to use a calculator on your test. Divide both sides by 21 and you are going to end up X having the value of 428.6. Uh, if you round it to the nearest whole number, it would be 429. In number seven, name the outlier of the data set. Well, which one looks very different than all the others? That would be 51. Now let's go to the next page. Here we have a box plot. It says use the graph below about the heights of players on a team to answer questions 8 to 13. The upper extreme, 84. The lower extreme, 72. The lower quartile, 75. The upper quartile, 82. The median, 79. And the interquartile range will be 82 minus 75, and that will give you the answer of 7. That's the distance between the lower quartile and the upper quartile, 75 and 82. Now let's go on to the next section. Use the following graph to answer questions 14 to 16. Round, the, round to the nearest tenth if necessary, so we will keep the answer um, in tenths, rounded to the nearest tenths. All right, so the maximum value on this is 27, and the minimum value, 21, and the mean. To do the mean, you're going to add these all together. Now this is my technique to help it 
go a little faster. I have three 21s, so that's a 63. I have two 23s, a 46. Four 24s, 96. Four 25s, 100. A 26. And three 27s, an 81. Now I'm going to add those numbers all together and divide by however many dots I have. All right, so let's see, I will do 63 plus 46 plus 96 plus 100. I am not going to divide it by six, I'm going to divide it by the number of dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The sum 412 divided by 17, and when I round it to the nearest tenth, 24 and 2 tenths. That is the mean. Does that make sense? Yes. By looking at the numbers here, I know that that's a very reasonable answer. Now let's go on to number 17. A survey found that 8 out of 20 students' favorite sport is soccer. If there are 550 students in the school, predict how many of the students would prefer soccer as their favorite sport. So it's soccer over total. So I'm going to use S to represent soccer, T for total. 8 out of a total of 20 equals X over 550. Now, I could simplify this fraction to make it even a little easier. 8 twentieths will simplify to the fraction 2 fifths equals X over 550. Now when I do that, I see, oh, um, 5 times 110 equals 550, and 2 times 110 will give you 220. So the answer would be 220 students. Now, you can still get the same answer, just cross products. 20 times x equals 8 times 550, then divide them both by 20, and here you also will end up with x equals 220 students. Both ways will work. Number 18, a survey found that 2 out of 10 students do not have siblings. What is a reasonable prediction for the number of students who do have siblings if there are 500 students? This is one you have to read carefully. If 2 out of 10 do not, what fraction do have siblings? Why, that'll be 8. So we're going to use 8 out of 10. These do have siblings. just one B, excuse me, do have siblings, and 10 is your total. So if you have 500 people, how many of the 500 would have siblings? Well, I know that you can take 10 times 50 is 500, so 8 times 50 will give me the answer 400. So how many will have siblings? 400 will have siblings. Now we're going to compare box plots. Let's go on to number 19. Which gym has a greater range? Well, it's the top one, and the name of that gym is Fun Fit. If you have any questions over these, please make sure you ask questions before we do the test tomorrow. I'll be happy to go over any of these problems. Now we have one more page to do. Let's go to the back. 
on this page, we have to find the mean, median, mode, range, and identify if there are any outliers. All right, so the first thing we're going to do for the mean is we add the, the numbers together in the data set. Um, and I believe it's 153. So I will have 153 divided by however many numbers are in the data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 153 divided by 7. It says round to the nearest tenth will give me the answer 21 and 9 tenths. Median. I have to put them in order from the smallest value to the, the largest or highest value. 3, 18, 19. Now I'm going to do the numbers that are in the 20s. We have 20 and 26. 32 and 35. The median is the middle number, and that happens to be 20. Mode. There is no mode. They all occurred once. The range, maximum minus minimum, 35 minus 3 equals 32. And the outlier will be 3. Okay, let's look at number 25 and 26. Here we are looking at left and right-handed people. We have males and females. The first question deals with females. It says 53 12th grade female students were surveyed. So if I have the total, the total number of females will be 53. The total number of males will be 68. Okay, and then if we wanted the total number of total students, we would add those two together, and um, 121 total students in that survey. All right, so now let's go on and answer this number 25. If there are 200 females in the 12th grade, predict how many are left-handed. So 7 out of 53 are left-handed. 7, 53. These are left-handed. I'm going to do LH for left-handed. TF for total female. Equals, if there are 200 females, how many do we think would be left-handed? Now, I'll do my cross products. 53 times X equals 7 times 200 then divide both sides by 53, so we end up with our x. And x equals, you multiply, divide, you're going to get 26 and 4 tenths. 26 and 4 tenths out of 200 people, um, 200 females would be predicted to have, to, to be left-handed. Now let's go on to number 26. If there are 400 male and female students. So this is the total population in the 12th grade. Predict how many male and females are right-handed in the 12th grade. Well, in this survey, our total is 121. So we're going to put 121 down as our denominator. That represents total. And we are wanting to know how many are right-handed out of 400 male and female, so a total of 400. Okay, so what is our total of right-handed people? Well, right-handed, we're going to have to add this number here. 46 plus 63 will give us a total of 109. So right-handed people is 109 out of a total 121 people. Now we will do our cross products. 121 times x equals 109 times 400. 
To solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 121, and you will end up having the answer of x equals 360.3. Okay, we're almost finished. We're now on problem number 27. It says Clinton School Cafeteria Student Satisfaction. Hmm. Circle the letter of the sampling method that will better represent the whole population. Is it going to be A or B? Well, let's find out. Mark surveys 40 students who are in his classes. 72 who in his classes. 72% are satisfied with the food in the cafeteria. Let's look at the next one. Tammy surveys 65 students randomly choosing names from a list of all students in the school. 85% are satisfied with the food in the cafeteria. All right, you're going to choose B. Why? It is a random survey. So why did you circle the one you chose? It is a random survey. All right, kids. I hope you are studying this evening, or maybe you get up early and study in the morning to be prepared for your test today. Have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow ready to give you the test.